It certainly is a beauty. The tear of Buddha is one of the finest rubies in the world, Mr. Bentley. How come this Buddha sheds red tears? Just to be more exclusive, I suppose? It is part of an ancient legend. <laughs> well, my firm's gonna shed tears when they find out what I paid for it. I, uh, I think you'll find that about right. Is that correct? Quite. And thank you for your courtesy, Mr. Bentley. You're welcome. Oh, uh, just a moment, uh, Namor. You haven't uh, mentioned this transaction to anyone else, have you? I assure you, no one knows of it except ourselves and my client. And then keep it under your hat. Uh, <laughs> I should say, under your turban. <laughs> Naturally. We'll be discreet, Mr. Bentley. Good afternoon. So long. coming along. Oh, favorably, I believe. Wu Ting's been telling me he thinks he has land on Johnny Fly's hideout. Great. So we're finally catching up with our friend the stranger. Where is it? My investigation is far from being complete, but I have definite reason to believe that his associates are among the denizens of our lamentably unsavory waterfront. Hmm. That's funny. I always figured Johnny Fly would be the kind of a crook who'd hang around a place like this, for instance. <laughs> well, Edith, what do you have, hmm? Well, I think I'll have a claret punch. Claret punch, and I'll have a... Uh... A brandy and soda. Yes. Well, Chief, it looks as though you're going to have to pay off on our bet after all. Listen, the bet was that you're going to capture the public nuisance. You don't think I'm going to pay off if Wu Ting does all the work? Well, Ting, eh? Say, Wu Ting, how about taking me on one of your snooping expeditions? I'm very sorry, but it would not be wise. Your presence would create suspicion. But I'll communicate with you the moment I have definite information. Edith, are you trying to flirt with that young man? Uncle, have you got a pencil? Uh, uh, yes, I guess I have, yes. Yeah. Now, my dear, let me... You know that I haven't seen my wife and kids for a year? <laughs> yeah. When you get home, your youngsters will ask your wife, who's that strange-looking man? Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Waiter, will you give this card to that man over there? The one in the white suit. With pleasure, madam. Excuse, please. The young lady over there send you this card. Where? Over there. I see it. Will you pardon me, huh? Go ahead. Edith, gosh, I'm glad to see you. Hello, Jack. How are you? Oh, what in the world are you doing in this jumping off place? Well, my uncle had to come down here in business, and he brought me with him. This is my uncle, Mr. Bentley, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, how do you do, sir? Glad to know you. Did you join us? Thank you. What do you have to drink? Uh, scotch and soda, please. Scotch and soda. Yes, sir. Hey, this is great. Are you staying long? 
No. But we have to leave day after tomorrow. <clears throat> oh, you do. I, I beg your pardon, but I have some letters I'd like to get off. <laughs> I hope you two can struggle along without me. Glad to meet you again. <laughs> we'll do the best we can. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, darling. Now, tell me all about yourself. How long have you been here? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm looking at you. Do you mind? <laughs> Stop being a fool. Oh, I've always been a fool about you. Dee, do you remember the grand times we used to have? I certainly do. Remember the Halloween party that you went dressed as Juliet? Oh, yes, and you went dressed as... Say, what did you go dressed as? Now, you don't mean to tell me that you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you haven't told me yet what you're doing down here. Well, if you must know, I'm on a secret mission. Really? Yes. I'm on the trail of the lost cord. <laughs> Say, that's rather good. Is it? What did you think they're going to mean? Oh. Honey? Uncle Joe? Joe! Well, haven't you a key? Okay. Oh, yeah. open it. What happened to Joe? What's happened to him? Um, it's all right. He's still breathing. <laughs> Operator. Send the house physician up to Mr. Bentley's suite immediately. Yes, that's right. Oh, oh, wait a minute. And if Inspector Green is here, send him up also. If not, get in touch with him. Thank you. Oh, talk to me, Uncle Joe. Tell me what happened. Oh, oh poor darling. So, you think Johnny Fly pulled this job, huh? Unless some other crook is imitating his technique. You know, we found one of those lavaliers or the mark of it around every victim's neck. That's right. And to think that I was standing on the other side of that door. Who else did he get? No. Uh, according to Miss Bentley, about 200 pounds in money and some unset diamonds. Diamonds? Sure. Mr. Bentley is a representative of a large firm of jewelers in New York. The pawn shops will probably give us a lead. How is he, doctor? He is conscious. You may question him if you like, but please make it as brief as possible. Thank you, we will. I'm sorry to trouble you right now, sir, but I'm afraid it's necessary. This is my chief, Inspector Green. How are you? Did you get a look at this man? No, he, he jumped me from behind. I have an idea that he's the fellow that Wilson and I have chased across the Orient. He's a mighty smooth customer, but this time we've got him cornered. Now, if you give me a description of those diamonds... My, my, my niece will give you rest. I, I'm not so much concerned about the present loss as I am about what the thief did not find. I have an idea that the thief was not after the jewels, Inspector. Let me explain. You see, this afternoon my uncle bought a very valuable stone, a ruby. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's called the Tear of Buddha. You mean that stone that belongs to some broken-down Raja? Well, that thing must be worth $200,000. No wonder Johnny Fly was on the job. And, of course, it was too late to take it to the bank. And Uncle thought someone might possibly know of his little business transaction, so he thought it'd be better if I kept it. Do you mean to tell me you've been carrying that valuable stone around on your person all day? Mm-hmm. Uh, gentlemen, I have every reason to believe that the thief is after the ruby, and that he will make 
a second attempt. Perhaps you better put it in the hotel safe until morning. Inspector, have you ever taken a good look at that hotel safe? Why, if anyone even sneezed in its immediate vicinity, it would collapse. She's right, Chief. We'd better post a guard around this suite in case Johnny Fly decides to play a return date. Maybe they won't trouble you anymore tonight. Jack, you better stay here till the men arrive. Right. Johnny's pretty good to you, huh? You couldn't find one a little bit smaller. Maybe I will. Sometime, huh? You know, 
That's what I always say, is that the customer is always right. Give them the right change. No crooked stuff. And no rough stuff, never. Hey, what do you have to drink? Well, let's begin, Miss. Thank you. What do you have? Whiskey. John. Billy Cream whiskey. Billy nice. Billy cheap. Billy good. Oh, sir. Oh, me very solid. Excuse, please. What do you want? Oh, me just want a drink. You can do, please? Sure can do. What kind of drink do you want? Oh, whiskey, please. Uh, you bossy man here? Yeah, that's right. Oh, maybe you do me honor. Oh. Have link with me. <laughs> That's all right. Police at hotel. Try and find out what their plans are. Go on. Police. Police everywhere. Outside the door of their suite. Beneath their window. Sleeping with them for all I know. Poor right, Johnny. But you will not think of a way. You know, you're the smartest crook in all the world. You have told me so yourself. Ah! The crook? Yes. But a magician? No. Oh, sugar. I am so sorry, really. Oh, really. It's too bad. C'est une grande même histoire. J'en suis fatigué. Premièrement, c'est les diamants. Après ça, c'est l'argent. Mais qu'est-ce que c'est toute cette histoire? Derek, ya sarak. You are learning too many tricks from me, my little murder. He just entered. Just like a peddler. Maybe it is the police. All right. Go back to your post. About ah. him. About him. Maybe they follow you here, hmm, Johnny? Maybe. But I don't think so. Maybe they are watching every place in town. Wait here. Yesterday. Kola Kirtin, we did shoot for Belhau. Now I'm seated. Oh, no wonder you're thirsty. Hey, leave the whiskey here. No. Hello, Anzo. Hello. Where's Johnny? Oh, he's in his room. It's safe for you to wait here for him. Come on. Uh. Sit down. <laughs> No. You're not afraid of Johnny, I hope. No, I ain't afraid of nobody. <laughs> uh. huh. Oh. Oh. Hello, Johnny. I was just. 
someday, my friend, I might have to make you a present of the necktie, huh? Oh, oh, oh no, Johnny. You got me wrong. Why, I didn't mean nothing. I was just going to... Getting a cinder of her eye, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's it. Did I get it? Very thoughtful. Very. Oh, now, listen, Johnny. Just a minute. How about that hotel job? Any luck? No. Why well, I'm talking downstairs about this guy being robbed. Are you suggesting that I'm holding out on you? Oh, no, Johnny. But how about my cut? Well, this is all I got, understand? How about the ruby? How do I know? Maybe he swallowed it. Maybe... Yeah. The girl. I wouldn't be surprised. What girl? Never mind what girl. Didn't I tell you to let me know if any strangers are dropped in? Sure. There ain't any. That's just a regular crowd down there. Yeah? What about the Chinese peddler that was standing at the bar a few minutes ago? Oh, that chick's all right. Is that so? Sure, he told me so. Tell me, have you ever been shot in the head? No. I, I've been knifed, though. Oh. I thought possibly somebody had blown your brains out. Wait a minute. Listen, you ape. Your harmless Chinese peddler was having tea this afternoon at the hotel with the two American detectives. Oh. So the dirty little rat lied to me then, huh? Well, I suppose you know what to do with uh, liars. <laughs> sure I do. Get busy. It'll be a pleasure. All right, all right, break it up. It's Wu Ting. Never mind, never mind. What is it? I don't know. The Wu Tang was trying to tell us something. Come in. Good morning. Hello, How do you feel? All right. In fact, I think I'll get out of here for a little while. No, you're not going to get out. You're going to stay right here till I get back. I won't be very long. Huh? Is Jack going to the bank with you today? No. Huh? No, well, he couldn't come. Oh. He sent over a very nice young man to play bodyguard. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, you'll be careful now, won't you? Of course I will, darling. Now, don't you worry. I'll be back in about half an hour. All right. Well, you run along. Huh? Yeah. I'll be good. And... Sorry to keep you waiting. Well, he's quite all right, Miss Bentley.
用我的来的。不行，我也得我们来听。咱们打不过来，走了，我都不接你兵器啊。Oh, it's so beautiful. Yes, most beautiful. Oh, so you like her very much, huh? I like all beautiful things. Mine is the soul of an artist. You think she is more beautiful than I? Sure. How did you guess it, my little Mora? Well, I fixed that. When I get through with her, she will not be so beautiful. Stop it! Let me go! 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 I say! What's up? Mura and I were just discussing art. You... You think I'm more beautiful than these ones? Don't you, Boots? <laughs> sure! But I ain't had a good look at her yet. We strained your effort to make me jealous, my doll. We have business to attend to. Tell Lindsay to have the junk ready. I'm sailing tonight. We'll get the rest after we have cleared the harbor. You go alone? No. What about me? Don't worry. You'll be taken care of. I better be. On your way back, stop a Jala shop. Who, the money lender? Yeah, tell him I'm ready to talk business. Tell him to come after dark and be sure he hasn't followed. All right, okay. I've got it. It's an eye. A human eye. It's a description of someone. Johnny Fly. Well, maybe. But I don't think so. Wu Ting was trying to tell us something. He got a look at the man who knifed him. Hello. Yes, speaking. Spently. What? Yes, yeah, she's been gone nearly two hours. Yes, and she only went to the bank. It's only ten minutes' ride. Yes, I suspected that. We'll get on right away. I'll let you know. The girl's gone. What? What happened? I don't know exactly. We got separated. Another rickshaw blocked mine. I find him laying in the alley. When I clear the crowd, the lady, she disappear. Her rickshaw empty. Perhaps you would like some refreshments. Who are you? My friends call me Johnny. I trust that you will also. How'd I get here? In the basket. Not very roomy, but excellent for the conveyance of, uh, shall we say, contraband? Let me out of here. By the way, would you like a cup of tea? Oh. No, I remember. You're the waiter at the hotel. I feel very flattered. Few people ever notice a waiter's. Her faces. Nobody could ever forget your face.
Are you the proprietor? I'm sorry, but we'll have to check over your stock. We're looking for some stolen gems. The city is most welcome to search my place. Thank you. Wait a minute. What's your name? <laughs> Frank Curtin. What are you doing here? Oh, I just came over to hock my watch. I see. What's your business? I run a, a grog shop. Respectable joint, too. No rough stuff. I'm sure of that. How's business, by the way? Pretty good? Mm. I, I can't complain. But you said that you came here to hock your watch. Strange. You better come along with me to headquarters. Oh, what for? Oh, just to continue our little discussion on economics. Take him down to headquarters. Why did you murder Wu Ting? I tell you, I didn't do it. You're acting under Johnny Fly's orders, weren't you? I never heard of him. I tell you, I didn't knife nobody. Oh. What makes you think that Wu Ting was knifed? I didn't mention it. Uh, uh, smart guy, ain't you? Listen, Curtin. Things might go easier with you if you tell me what you know about Johnny Fly. Well, that's exactly nothing. Oh, all right. Take off your clothes. What's the idea? Don't worry. You won't need them. You're not going any place. Oh, you guys, let me alone. I ain't done nothing. I... Here is some food. I hope you choke on it. But why? Well, I haven't done anything to you. Why? Because you have tried to take my Johnny from me. That's why. I don't want your Johnny. All I want to do is get away from here. You'll help me, won't you? Help you? <laughs> Before I help you, I... I tear you in a million pieces, like things! Stop it, you little fool! Stop it! Oh, uh, stop it, my cheap! My, 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 my. Let go of her! No! Let go! Come on, get out of here! Get out! Please, Miss Bentley, forgive this breach of hospitality. I assure you it won't happen again. The child is a little jealous. Go on and talk. What for? Oh, I hear your voice. <laughs> what do I talk about? The weather? Now, recite me a nursery rhyme, stupid. I don't know any. Well? And tell me about Johnny Fly. Or maybe you know him by another name. Maybe. What's he look like? Listen, Curtin. Quit stalling. You're gonna tell me and you're gonna do it now. Mm. Now, now I remember. Johnny Fly. Sure. I ran into a book by that name once. He, he was tall and he had blonde hair and, and a beard and a peg leg too. And a scar on his right cheek. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. You've helped a lot. That's all, boys. You mean I'm free? Hardly. It might be sort of confusing for two of us to be in circulation. Lock him up. You dirty rat! 
that. Great work, Jack. You've done a swell job. I suppose you realize, though, that you're playing with dynamite. Don't worry, boss. I've been in tough spots before. Did Curtin give you any leads? Yeah. He told me what Johnny Fly doesn't look like. He isn't blonde. He ain't got a beard. And he ain't got no peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you realize that my uncle had the whole police force searching for me by now. Yes, I've been informed of such activities, but we will be beyond reach by midnight. What are you going to do with me? I trust you enjoy ocean travel. Well, you can't get away with this. Oh, you can't take it easy, please. Sit down. Let me explain.
Why not? We have to get rid of her anyway. Come. He's waiting. Here. Where have you been? In jail. What's happened? They picked me up in the pawn shop. Was Jala arrested too? No. They just searched the joint. Did you have a chance to give him my message? Yeah. Sh sure, I gave him your message. Well, he to be here in a minute, then. Go to the back door and let him in. Our Go on. Our job. What want with you? They asked me a lot of questions about that chink detective. I wonder what made them connect you with that unfortunate affair. Maybe the chink tipped him off he was coming here. Listen, rat. Did you squeal about me? Oh, of course not. Huh. Still, I think I'll take leave of your hospitality as soon as possible. Listen, we leave as soon as I finish my business with Jala. Wait for me downstairs. And keep your eyes open for unwelcome strangers. Go on. Salam, Sahih. Salam. It was kind of you to comply with my request, Jala. I was most happy, sir, to do so. Under the circumstances, I felt it unwise for me to come to your uh, place of business. Very unwise. And now, uh, speaking of business. Yes, yes, of course. Will you do me the honor to step this way? My sleeping quarters will afford more privacy. Sorry. So, he thinks he can get rid of me so easy. Well, we shall see about that. Oh, Butch, I think uh, very much that Johnny tried to cheat you, huh? Cheat me? Ow! He take Jala in there so you will not know how much he has paid for the ruby. Flame, eh? 
With your permission, eh? Certainly. I think maybe we'd better play a little joke on Johnny, no? What kind of a joke? Pretty soon, he take this one to the boat with him. Where's he gonna get her there? <laughs> the way he'll bring her, of course, in the basket. Oh, yeah. You do like me a little bit, don't you, Ansel? Yeah, of course. And then, I can be your girl. But before you put her in the basket, you take this. Come here. I find that I cannot part with a ruby. You ain't gonna sell it? Of course I'm going to sell it. But you're going to get it back for me. How? Oh. You wait for Jala at the back door, presumably to let him out. Instead, you are going to help him attend paradise. The same as you did with the detective. Understand such thing. I find uh, the Kira Buddha is genuine. Ah. Therefore, my friend, your figure will be satisfactory. Very nice. Find my friend. The amount is correct. Very well, thank you. Sahil. It has been a pleasure to deal with you, Sahib. I thank you, Sahib, and may you have the most pleasant journey. And may you continue to prosper. Salam. Salam. to give you a break. Johnny sent me down here to knife you. Now, if you want to live, you've got to play dead. Come on. Give me the ruby. Give it to me. Stay there and stay there quietly. Him, I want to guard the side entrance. <laughs> Well, 
Let me have it. Something told me that wasn't exactly a friendly gesture. I thought you were a fool, Butch. But not that foolish. Come on, let me have it. Come on. Tell Akkor and the rest we'll leave as soon as I finish packing. And uh, if you try any more tricks, you'll be paid in steel, not gold. so smart. What do you mean? This Butch who have come up dressed up like Butch is not Butch, but he's a detective dressed like Butch. Ah. Johnny, but listen, I know. I have seen this man with my own eyes. Steady, honey. It's me, Jack. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack. Are you alone? No, Ben and his men are waiting outside. So... Come on, I gotta get you out of here. We can't make it that way.
You're tired of wearing this eye. All right, take him downstairs. Good work, Jack. There's your man. 